This is Jay Big Ticket 23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to upgrade and replace your Precision T3500 power supply with an EVGA 700 watt power supply. Um, so, if you've never been to GreenPCGamers.com, you should definitely check it out. In your case, you probably have a Precision T3500 if you're watching this video. Uh, so, you just go to www.GreenPCGamers.com, click on the blog page and search articles for T3500. Once you do that, there's gonna be an article that comes up and it's gonna say, make my precision T3500 into a gaming computer. You can click on that link. And so this blog page is gonna give you a ton of awesome upgrade ideas on how to upgrade your precision T3500 to optimize it for gaming. Um, so you wanna use this page. Um, we'll even list the power supply part number that we're using for the install in this video. Um, as well as other upgrade ideas. And so, yeah, definitely check this page out, bookmark it. Um, we have all the high-end components on this page. And if you have a T3500, um, comment below. Let us know how you how you, um, how you you got your T3500, whether it was donated by your work, you found it at a garage sale. Um, we hear tons of crazy, you know, crazy ideas and about T3500 upgrades, and, and we hear tons of, um, crazy places where people have received T3500 workstations. So let us know, comment, let us know where you got your T3500 from. All right, so let's get to this install because this is going to take quite a while. Uh, we've got our T3500 workstation. This this thing's going on like 9, 10 years old now. Um, here's our EVGA 700 watt power supply. Now, if you watch any of our other videos, you're going to realize that we, we always go for higher wattage so we can upgrade our GPU. Um, so this... This power supply doesn't require an adapter like some of the other systems do. Um, so we're going to be able to use it just stock. So remove your side panel. There's a little um, you know, thumb piece on the top of the chassis you push to the right, and the side panel will remove pretty easily. Um, so this system comes with a stock 525-watt power supply. Now these kind of have a high, they kind of have a high failure rate. One of the common reasons is because um, people put graphics cards that are too powerful for the for the 525 watt power supply, so they fry them out pretty often. You know, we see tons of replacement power supplies. So the 700 watt power supply is hopefully hopefully going to solve that problem for us. So put the system on its side. First step: remove the existing power supply. Now this is kind of a can of worms uh, because this power supply has uh, what they call a cable harness which is really nice because one of the cables actually runs underneath the motherboard um, so we're going to remove the cable harness first so that we can take out the power supply module to give us a little bit more room inside the chassis but that uh, cable harness runs all the way underneath the motherboard so we're going to show you a couple tips you know whether you want to remove that cable harness or just clip it um, because our new power supply is going to have its own cables attached to it or if you use like a modular power supply, um, just like this one, you could, you know, that would work as well. All right, so this is kind of tricky. You have to kind of sneak your your finger, your pointer finger below the power supply. There's two clips on it, or not the power supply, but the cable harness. Um, and then once you do that, you can shimmy it out with your hands. So, um, and then once the cable harness is removed, there's a little blue button that we pointed out. Push that down and just slide that power supply out, and then you're able to remove that power supply module. All right, so things are going well. Now we need to remove our cable harness. So we're gonna unplug our 24 pin power and then we have to unplug our optical drive. You may have other components installed as well, so you're gonna have to unplug anything that's plugged into that power supply harness. All right, so from here we see that, that there's two cables that run underneath the motherboard. And we're pointing them out right here. And they go all the way over to this side. So we're going to show you the lazy way and then the, uh, the, the you know, clean way that we normally like to do it. So this is the lazy way. You can get some wire, crip, um, wire cutters and be really careful and only cut the power supply harness. And try to do as clean a job as you can and just be really careful. Don't cut your finger. And you can just cut it and then not have to remove your system board to remove the rest of the cable. I mean, it's going to look kind of goofy, but 
I mean, who's opening up their side panel to look at that anyway? So the, the lazy way is to just clip it. And you have to clip it on each side. And then remove this harness. So we're doing the right side right now. Again, be really careful when you do this. These wire cutters will take off a finger pretty easily. All right, so we're taking out the blue cables. All right, so at this point, we're going to remove that right side. All right, that's gone. So now we can clip the left side if we want to. And again, this is the kind of the lazy way to do it, the quick way, because who really wants to remove their motherboard to get rid of that cable harness? All right, so clip the left side. And we, we try to pull it through. You know, you might be thinking, okay, cool, why not just pull it through? Um, it's not as easy as that because the, the cables are zip-tied underneath the motherboard. So, like, if you want to, you know, if you want to try to pull it through, you just can't do it. You're going to have to remove your motherboard to get rid of those zip ties. So we removed that back cable, the CPU power, and we're going to try to pull it through. Just You're going to see it just doesn't work. It kind of pulls through, but it gets stuck on those zip ties, and we don't want to risk damaging our system board from underneath. So we've kind of... Um, Pulled probably harder than, harder than we probably should have to try to remove that. All right, so we're going to remove our motherboard because we want to get rid of those cables. They kind of they don't look good. Um, so get a long head Phillips. You have to remove that black fan shroud in the front of the front of the chassis. So there's one Phillips screw, and you can see it right here. That's where we removed that. And there's two Molex connectors we had to remove to, to unplug those fans. All right, from here now we, we have to... Unplug any connections on the motherboard, or you, you can leave the control panel unplugged in, as you'll see. Uh, we're going to remove our graphics card. We're going to remove, um, there's a little FireWire card in the system as well. We're going to remove that, and that's going to give us play to uninstall our system board, or temporarily uninstall it to remove that cable harness. There's a bunch of screws on the system board. It's not like some other boards where there's like one thumb screw, and then you can remove the motherboard. Um, they're all... Phillips, and luckily we can leave our heat sink and our processor and our memory still installed. So that's kind of nice. Um, so I, I don't know. I'd say there's probably like 14 to 16 screws on this board. And don't worry, when we reinstall the board, we're not going to show you how to um, how to reinstall it. If you're curious about all the screws, we're going to show you every screw that you had to remove to remove this board. And so. Yeah, you remove every screw, and that's going to give us access to the cable harness that's run underneath the motherboard. Now, we're installing the EVGA power supply that has uh, the cables attached to it. They make some other modular power supplies that are similar to the power supply that we're removing um, that allow you to keep your cables really clean, only use the cables that you want to use. Um, so you can consider using a different power supply um, other than the EVGA to keep your power supply or to keep your cable harness looking really nice and clean. And I'm talking about the replacement power supply here. And so a sneak peek into why we are installing this power supply is we are going to install a GTX 1080 graphics card on one of our future videos. So um, if you dig this type of, um, you know, these type of installs, um, we do these installs all the time. Um, definitely consider hitting the subscribe button um, and we'll show you uh, other cool install videos. All right, so we have removed all the screws. We're just kind of gently remove that blue cable harness, the blue and white one. And see, we're trying to pull the other one out, but as you're going to see that it is zip tied underneath the motherboard. So we're going to give you a little angle at that. So kind of gently remove this, this motherboard. And we'll prop it up so you can see the little black zip ties that are underneath there. All right, this is kind of a pain, but you have to think about it this way. Like most people are not going to replace their power supply with a third-party power supply like we are. Most people, when they're replacing their power supply, they're just going to go with the same 525-watt power supply. 
And when they do that, they can re reuse the existing cable harness. So you don't have to go through this whole process if you if you're just going to stick with a 525 watt power supply. All right, so we're going to get our wire cutters and clip those zip ties so we can remove that harness. And I believe there are three of them. All right, now it is going to make it so that SATA cable isn't locked down anymore, but that's fine. Uh, we can still install our motherboard right over the top of it. It'll be secure because there's about 16 screws that lock this motherboard into place. Okay, so um, now we just need to reinstall our motherboard. Um, we will remove the part of the cable harness that is connected to the drive cage area. And at that point, we're finally ready to, well, sorry, we have to reinstall our graphics card, our FireWire card, and then we are finally ready to install our replacement 700 watt power supply. All right, so we're going to try to, we don't want to clip these, uh, these little, these little bands that hold the cables on there just because they're, they can be useful for the uh, new power supply harness. So we're going to try to take those out without damaging them. All right, so now we've got that loose. We'll unplug it from our solid state drive. And that's the long way to remove the power supply harness. I think most people will pick the clipping route, which is fine. So there's the cable harness all chopped up. But see how, see how much cleaner it looks now? So we're going to install a couple screws here, but then we're going to fast forward past uh, reinstalling the motherboard. All right, so then we have to we do have to reinstall our fan, our front fan assembly, but we're going to wait to do that until we plug the new power supply in because we need we want to give ourselves nice access to all the the or sorry, just the CPU plug. All right, so here's our graphics card again. That has to go back in. And then we will put our PCI FireWire card back in, even though we don't really use that. Okay. All right, good deal. So we've got our SATA cables as well. Now, if you're really paying attention, you're going to notice that we plug them into the wrong spots. That's okay. We were able to go into the F2 setup after this install, and we were able to just change our boot sequence. Um, or activate those ports and then change our boot sequence without having to replug in those cables. So I doubt most of you guys are paying attention to that part. All right, so we're going to reinstall our fan assembly or halfway reinstall. We're just going to plug in the Molux, or the Molux connectors so we don't forget to install those when we, when we screw the fan back into place. All right, so now it's time to actually put a, replace, a replacement power supply in the system. Now this power supply is a little bit smaller than the existing 525 watt power supply. Um, the cool thing though is the screw holes line up, so we don't have to use any like command strips to mount this. We can actually screw it in. Um, as you can see, there's a little sliver of space below that will be open. That's okay. That's just more airflow, right? So, but on some other installs that we've done, we've had to use like um, 3M command strips to actually lock power supplies into place because. The screw holes are different on the third-party power supply compared to the OEM power supply. So, like I said, this is uh, we're lucky in this case that it mounts perfectly. And on other systems, we have to use um, like 24-pin to 18-pin adapters or 24-pin to 8-pin adapters. In this system, we don't have to do that uh, because it does have the 24-pin standard on board. All right, so uh, first thing we're going to plug in is our 24-pin adapter, which is standard on this power supply. And it plugs in really easily. Okay, so we do have to plug in our 8-pin CPU power, um, and that is also standard on this power supply. Uh, they, they combine two 4-pins to make 8-pins. Um, so this can be kind of a tricky install to keep them together. Um, but, you know, if you have two hands, it's a little bit easier to do. And we managed to do it with one hand. Voila. Okay, so now that we have those plugged in, we are going to go ahead and reinstall our fan assembly. 
So drop that into place. Now, when you reinstall the screw for this, it's kind of a pain. If you have a, like a magnetic Phillips, that's ideal. Um, or you can, uh, if you have a magnet, uh, you can rub that across your uh, Phillips screwdriver. And so that screw sticks to it. Because if it doesn't stick to it, um, it's kind of a pain. You'll drop it down below there and you won't be able to lock it into place. Now, we rubbed our Phillips screwdriver with a magnet. So we were able to screw it in really easily without dropping that screw about 10, 15 times. So um, just a little tip there when you reinstall that fan assembly. All right, so we're going to plug in our data cable for our optical drive, and then uh, we're going to plug in power from the new power supplies cable harness. All right, cool. So, um, oh, and when you when you reinstall that power supply, the, the fan needs to be on the bottom of the power supply so it's open. Um, it's kind of hard to screw it up because you won't be able to screw the power supply in with the existing holes if you don't have it set up that way. But that's really important. All right, we're going to put our uh, memory shroud back on. And now we are ready to plug, uh, put our put our drive cage back in its place. And then we will have to plug uh, power back into our solid state drive so we can boot up into our operating system. All right, so we um, once we get everything plugged in that we want plugged in, um, it's a good idea with a power spot like this that doesn't have those modular cables to get like a zip tie and you know clean up the cables a little bit. So we don't have anything in our five and a quarter inch bay uh, below below our optical drive. So it'll be really easy for us to go ahead and bunch those cables up, zip tie them, and then just stick them right below that optical drive. And you can make it look as clean as you can. Yeah, I mean, you can spend a bunch of time doing this, and but you know, this our side panel is not clear. We just really want uh, you know good cooling in the system, and so that this cable will or this cable harness will fit perfectly. So it looks you know fairly clean. All right, so now you've you've finished the install. the The biggest pain is actually removing the old power supply. All right, so put your side panel back on, plug it back in. Um, if you follow the steps that we've done, you are going to have a successful install. You're going to have additional wattage um, for uh, better GPUs, like like you know that's our plan. We're going to put a 1080 in in a future video, and so I really hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, make sure and comment below. Um, definitely consider hitting the subscribe button. Um, and uh, if you like free giveaways, we do monthly giveaways on GreenPCGamers.com Facebook page. So uh, go ahead and like us on Facebook uh, and you will qualify for those giveaways. Uh, thank you so much for watching.